What's going on, everybody? My name's Lucas. This is CJ. This is our podcast. Um, it's not the first time we're doing this. It's actually like the second episode we filmed, but we wanted the first one to be really good. Wanted it to be, uh, you know, somewhat impactful and somewhat uh, just relaxed and, and funny at the same time. It's going to be a mix of both, uh, you know, some serious real life stuff, some business stuff, obviously, because I talk a lot about that on my page. And I think he's got a lot of good stuff to talk about. And it's kind of just, it's just going to be natural. There's no script whatsoever. So we're just kind of going to talk about whatever. We got some Jack Daniels honey out right now um, just to, you know, loosen it up a little bit and uh, get some good stories flowing for everybody. But yeah, um, I'll go ahead and let CJ introduce himself because um, obviously you, if you're from my social media, you guys know a little bit about me, but uh, you know, he's just as important. Totally. What's up? CJ Tim, uh, 22 years old. Me and Lucas met freshman year, actually, neighbors. Uh, but who I am now, uh, I'm a crypto trader, venture capitalist firm owner, and I do a few other things. So do you want me to start like from the beginning, or how should we do this? All right, well, <laughs> I'm going to ask this question. All right, go for it. And <laughs> you're probably not going to want to answer it. First of all, CJ is a very, very <laughs> humble guy, probably the opposite of me. I'm very much like, a, and I think this is why I'm very polarizing to a lot of people, and I piss a lot of people off. <laughs> which I don't give a fuck about, but um, I'm very much a person that's like, I'm going to tell everyone extremely loudly what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it. And, you know, if you believe in me, that's great. If you don't, that's great, too. I think that makes it just as much fun. But CJ is more of like a work and silence type of person, and uh, he had to do some thinking about wanting to come on here. Um, but he's he's a very balanced individual in terms of work hard, play hard. That's why I thought he would be a good person to host it with. And... Um, I didn't really find out. See, I was actually friends with CJ for a while before I found out that he was actually as smart as he is and as successful as he is. He didn't talk to anybody about it. So that brings me to the question. You don't have to give me an exact number, but I think it's important because everybody on the show obviously is like, who the fuck is this guy all the time on my page? And they're going to be like, who the fuck are you? So how much money do you think you've made to date total from crypto trading, uh, any sort of business ventures? I know you did drop shipping for a little bit. Um, how much money have you made from your investments? Just give me like a total number because I know people watching are probably going to be like, yo, who is this guy? Yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of secretive with a lot of this because I usually value privacy. Uh, but Lucas invited me to come on this. and thought it was a great opportunity. So, yeah. So, right now I do a bunch of different things. But to sum it up, I my net worth is seven figures. I'll say that. Um, seven figures. So, As yeah. a 22-year-old. That's um, nuts, right? But, I kind of want to start from the beginning of how this yeah, all yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Tell uh, your Because it, it didn't happen overnight. So all the way in the beginning, back eighth grade year, freshman year, high school, I was a Minecraft nerd, okay? I played Minecraft all the time. So was I. Hardcore factions. We both actually played. Uh, and I started to record myself a little bit, make some YouTube videos. I got a bit of a following, like 4K subs. I was getting like 10K, uh, 10K 50K views every video. They kind of got on like the trending page. And these servers, Minecraft servers, would pay me like $40 per video to upload a trailer. And I kind of got some money for a while, saved it up, and I was like, hey, instead of having these servers pay me, why don't I make my own server and use my channel and advertise myself instead? So I made my own Minecraft server, and I made my first like few thousand bucks from that, and that's really my first business that I started. And that is when kind of something happened, and my PayPal got frozen because I was under 18 at that time, and you aren't allowed to have a PayPal under 18. So basically PayPal froze my money for a whole year. My parents had to like come in and help me get it out. It was a whole mess. And in between that, I also drop shipped fidget spinners for a little bit. Uh, that was like at the peak of their trend. Um, but long story short, my PayPal getting froze kind of made me like, hey, like how is PayPal allowed to like freeze my money? I didn't like the fact they were able to like just pause it. So that's how I started getting into crypto and crypto like being you own your own money, decentralization, all that. Um, and yeah, started getting into crypto 2018. Um, worked my way up doing a bunch of different things, and now I'm here. I own my own venture capitalist firm with uh, Six Figures Asset Under Management. Uh, and I also have another side, which is like angel investing and like crypto trading, which is like owning Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a bunch of altcoins. And yeah, so that's a little bit about me and my story. So Wait, so now I need, now I need to ask some questions because I'm yeah. sure everybody's like, whoa, what the fuck? First of all, so I'll tell a little story here. I found out CJ, the, re the way I found out CJ was as smart as he is and as successful as he is, is because right after COVID, he was in my dorm hall freshman year, right after COVID, everyone had been home for a long time. All the, the boys in our dorm hall wanted to see each other. So we made this trip and we were out all night drinking. Everyone was hungover in the morning. And I'd like to think that I'm someone that wakes up early. 
Um, and so after a whole night out, I think I woke up at like 637. Normally I'll wake up a little earlier, but after a night out, like I feel like that's pretty early. And there CJ is sitting on the floor on his computer. And so I'm like, yo, you know, booze still in my system. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing up? what are you working on? You have like an assignment due or something? And he goes, no, I, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm just like, I'm, I'm working on some stuff I like to do. So me being very, uh, you know, curious and wanting to pry into everything. I was like, well, what are you doing? He goes, uh, I'm trading crypto. And I was like, Oh, I, I trade a little bit myself. Like, you know, my first question was how much money have you made doing that? Cause you know, he's my friend. It is a rude question to ask how much money have you made? But if it's your friend and like you're, you know, you're just wondering, then I think it's okay to pry a little bit. It's one thing if they don't want to answer, but he didn't want to answer. He's like, yeah, I made a little bit, you know, just a little bit here and there. And so I kept prying. I was like, how much? He's like, ah, you know, I've, I've made a good amount. I keep prying a little more. And then finally I got him to open up and he was like, okay, you know, I've made enough to, to cover school um, from crypto trading. So that was when I knew CJ was legit. And up until that point, I always knew he was like a nice, good guy, like to party, fun dude. But I didn't, you know, he was always so quiet about all of his side businesses and everything that he was working on. And I personally think it, it kind of does you a disservice. Obviously, now you're opening up about it. But like, you know, I would actually say in a lot of ways, you're probably smarter than me. But I've been very fortunate to get connected with a lot of really good business people because I've been so open about what I do and I just tell everybody. And so, you know, it invites a lot of people in. But I'm glad you're finally here doing this. Um, Appreciate it, man. Yeah. I mean, that's, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons why I came on is because, like, in today's society, social media and exposure is so much in today's world. And the fact that, like, I did value privacy, but at the same time, like, the connections that I want to make and I want to meet a lot of like-minded people, like I'm no Lucas, for example. <laughs> um, and, yeah. So, welcome to the pod, guys. First one. Hope you guys enjoy it. Just getting started, a little introduction, so. Hell yeah. All right, well, what's the first thing? You think we should get into, I guess I'll, I'll get into my story a little bit. Go for it, yeah. So, um, my name's Lucas. If you come from my social media page or Instagram, TikTok, whatever, you know a little bit about me already, I assume. But pretty much, I'm just a guy uh, who has been an entrepreneur since he was a little kid. I've always, um, I've always been a very loud person, like I said, but... The reason I created social media, at least my pages, is because I, I, number one, I like it. I've always made videos. I've always thought that was fun. Uh, but I wanted to document the process of me going from a broke college student um, to hopefully one day a very sex, successful entrepreneur. And I think, I, I'm just going to be honest, I know that's going to happen. Yeah, not hopefully, it, one day. And it's, it's funny because I get a ton of hate online from people. Like I am easily like you look at my comments and they're just ripping me apart all the time. I think it's fucking hilarious, but nothing pisses people off more on the internet than when you sound confident about something, whether it's like a lesson I'm giving or if I came on the internet and I was like, this is my company. It's going to be successful for some reason that really pisses people off. And it just goes to show like how many fucking losers out there there are that just hate themselves and hate their lives. And all they want to do is, tear other people down. But, um, I started social media about a year ago. Uh, it, it started with like fitness videos, you know, as dumb as that is. And I agree that is dumb. I, I had a fitness brand that I knew I wanted to start and I knew I needed to get exposure for that. So I started making workout videos. They didn't go anywhere. I posted 740 videos is what it was before my first one went viral. And the first one that went viral wasn't even a workout video. It was like an advice video. I was talking about how I moved to LA to live with my mentor. I had 400 bucks in my bank account. Actually, it might've been like 410, something like that. It was about 400 bucks. And uh, my mentor told me to get an Equinox membership, which was about like 350 bucks. So um, I got the membership. I had $60 left in my account to pay for food for a whole week until I got my first paycheck from my mentor. And I made a video about why I made that decision. It blew up. Half the comments were like, you're a fucking idiot. Half the comments were like, that's genius. And, you know, I can go into explaining, like, w what the reasoning for that was later. But, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's why I started social media. I have seen nothing but, obviously, there's a lot of negativity <laughs> from it, too. Because like, I get shit yeah. on a lot, both in person and, and online. But I've had, like, so many good experiences from it. So once again, that's why I'm glad CJ, CJ is here and, you know, talking about his shit, because I think there's a lot of people who can learn a lot from him, 
probably even more than me. So, you know, that's why I want to kind of ask him a few questions and share that with you guys. And before you go, I want to ask you a question, actually. Sure, so you're talking about kind of how you started your TikTok and all this. Um, a lot of you guys don't know, but Lucas started his TikTok while he was president of his fraternity, ZBT. What advice would you give no, people? No, it was right after, actually. Oh, right after. Right after. Okay. Right after. Um, what advice would you give people who want to, you know, put themselves out there, but are afraid they're going to get made fun of by their friends or their fraternity? Because a lot of people knew you. You had a big reputation at the time being, you know, a fraternity president. Not, not many fraternity presidents have their own TikToks, you know? So. Yeah. Okay, I guess um, there is no avoiding criticism in like any outlet of life. If you're going for something that other people don't go for, if you're going for something that's kind of out of the ordinary, um, you know, if you're looking to avoid being judged by other people, being looked at negatively, being criticized, being talked shit about, being made fun of, if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you're trying to avoid, you just shouldn't do anything worthwhile whatsoever. Stay in your fucking room, stay in your cave, play video games all day long, stay in your, what I call safe space, because, you know, putting yourself out on the internet is the exact opposite of a safe space, because, you know, I don't think I've ever, I've, there's only been one experience in my entire life, maybe, maybe two, when someone has come up to me in person and like tried to talk shit to me about what I've done. But, you know, it happens dozens of times every day over the internet. And that's because people can sit behind their screens and say whatever they want. And so, you know, my advice is like, don't be afraid of getting criticized or talk shit about online. If you're going to do social media, if anything, you should embrace it. It means you're doing something right. Because if people are taking time out of their day to talk shit about you, that means they are watching your videos. That means they are following what you're doing with your life. And if they're following what you're doing and they're talking about you and they're commenting on your shit, it means that's something you're making, something you're putting out, whether it's content, uh, whether it's music, whatever, it's worth listening to. So that would be my advice. Like, it's going to happen. Don't try and avoid it. Um, you know, t to go a little bit farther on that. I was someone that, you know, like CJ said, like a lot of people knew who I was on campus. I'm not trying to say that in like a cocky way or whatever, <laughs> but like I was very involved on campus. I talked to everyone. Like I just love talking and meeting random people. And so, you know, I had so many fucking people at my school. I'm still here right now, you know, talking shit. No one ever said it to my face, but I had a lot of people talking shit. And then and I heard about it because, you know, people would then come and tell me. And then, you know, once I finally like caught my break and, and blew up a little bit, you know, everyone was like, oh, when do I get to come on your podcast? And, you know, <laughs> I, let me be in one of your videos. It's just funny how it works. I'm not mad about it. It's just like, that's how it works. You have to expect that. What about you? Are, do you think you're afraid of criticism at all? Like, you know, if, if you're, if this is your start to going into social media, what do you think you're, what are you looking forward to? And what are you worried about? I guess I should say. Yeah, so um, looking forward to, I kind of already mentioned it, but connecting with a lot of like-minded people. I want to put myself out there. I want to inspire a lot of people because, I mean, crypto for a lot of people is really confusing. Trading is confusing. You see these, like, gurus on TikTok posting these, like, charts and lines and stuff and saying you can make money by this. And, like, it's a it's a complete, like, fugazi. It's a complete scam, selling courses, all this. Um, so I kind of want to provide some clarity to people and tell them that, like, hey, like, I came from like nothing. Like I came from making money, like starting a Minecraft server with like a few thousand dollars. And now I'm where I'm today. Um, now what I'm afraid of is breaking that privacy. You know, I don't want people judging me thinking I'm bragging. I don't want people thinking that like, Hey, that they can like use me for money, that kind of stuff. Uh, those are just my like honest worries. Um, but I'm super excited for this experience. Uh, we're gonna have some great oh, yeah. talks tonight. So what well, yeah. the, the not, the not sounding like your bragging thing is so hard because for anyone who doesn't know, I had a mentor over the summer and super successful, um, commercial real estate guy. I love the dude, but he's extremely hardcore. And his son, uh, is this guy named Michael Hudson, super Mike Huddy. He goes by super famous day trader was right under Tim Sykes, like multimillionaire. And he was such a good teacher to me when I was learning how to trade. But he, he was the exact same way. He was like, I don't want to brag. I don't want to flex all the money I'm making on every trade. And because of that, like when he posted, he tried to get into social media after he saw what I did. Cause I was living with him when I was first blowing up and his, his videos didn't go anywhere. And that was because he, it was they were they were honestly a little boring. And I was like, bro, I know you hate to do this shit, but 
if you want to get views, if you want to get exposure, if you want people to listen to you, you have to flash a little bit. Like, like show the car you have, show your profits, whatever, and then go into explaining how you did it. Um, but that's going to bring me to my next question is, be brutally honest, okay? Yeah. Can anyone trade crypto, in your opinion, and find success? What do you think? You know, um, surprisingly, I think yes. Really? But I think that there's like levels to the game, okay? Um, something I actually want to talk about, okay, is two years ago, sophomore year, uh, my roommate came to me and he was like, hey, I want to get into crypto. I'm really interested in it. What can I do? What's a good coin to buy? And I was like, hey, um, you know, this thing could go to zero, but this is what I'm in right now. You can invest if you want. I think you put like $1,000 into the coin. And a few months later, it went down. You lost it all. Yeah, then went out 99%, lost it all completely, bam, wiped out. And I was like, this is why I don't give people financial advice. I don't tell them what coins to buy all this um, because of that. But a month later from then, actually, um, the exchange that he used to buy the token, similar to like Robinhood, there's a crypto version of Robinhood. And they had something called an airdrop, which is where they gave a small percent of the company when they went public with the crypto token to users who actually use their product. And basically, he lost like $1,000, but then Uniswap airdrop, it's called an airdrop, people who know crypto know what I'm talking about, airdropped him a $1,000 check, bam. So even though he completely lost in his trade, just because he interacted with this protocol one time, he was able to make all his money back, basically. And that kind of leads me into the point of there's different strategies. Uh, crypto is a 24-7 game. Um, stock markets open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Crypto markets are open 24-7, everywhere from all over the world is trading them. So yeah, it's not something that everyone can do, but how someone can use it and who wants to start crypto with low capital, I think, is trying to farm these airdrops, basically. So if you can find these protocols and do research and be like, hey, I think that this project is going to do an airdrop soon, you just have to interact with that protocol, use it, and you can just get free money. Um, so yeah. That, that sounds hard. It's not, or it doesn't sound hard, but it sounds it sounds like a... And it might not be a lot of work, but you know, I've even traded, I've traded, I, I normally do stocks. I have traded crypto a little bit before, but even being pretty familiar with trading, I listen to you say that and I go, ah, that's a lot of work. You know <laughs> what I mean? I feel like most people, they get into it because they think it's easy money. And that was kind of my question is like, um, you know, I think the, the, stati the statistic is like 95% of people lose all their money, right? Mm -hmm. Trading. Yeah. So... Let me ask you this. What do you think the most important factor in becoming successful at trading is? Is it, is it memorization of certain charts and patterns? Is it mastering your emotions? Is it experience in general? What do you think? Yeah, so I think the most important thing is information asymmetry, which is basically means is the average bloke, okay, all of our parents, all of this, how they get news is when they watch the nightly news every night at 5 p.m., okay? Whereas nowadays in today's society with Twitter mostly, but you know, also Instagram, you get news right as it happens, right as it drops. So for example, two days ago, Elon Musk changed the Twitter logo oh, to, from, to a, a picture of Dogecoin yeah, and bam, right after the bat, Dogecoin shot up like 40% or something crazy. Mm. And most people probably saw that on the news or through an Instagram post a few hours later. But if you had notifications on for certain news channels on Twitter or you're well connected and you're able to get this information fast... Bam, see that, long doge, easy profits. Did you, did you rip that trade? I did not because I was unfortunately out during that time. Fuck. Um, so it's, so it's kind of like just timing. Like yeah, totally. Always like sitting at your computer being ready like, or like just having so many alerts on on your phone that like you see, you know, Elon tweeted it and then you just do it right away or what? Yeah, like if I pull up my phone right now and just left it, I, I have like a personal mode so it doesn't happen. But like when I'm working, there's like at least like five notifications every minute um, from like Twitter, Discord, just like everything, like constant alerts, what's going on in the world. And yeah, so to answer your question kind of in a more brief way, I think that getting information as fast as possible and acting on it is your best bet in crypto. And when I said easy, I don't think trading is at all easy. I think that you could utilize airdrops to get easy free money, but trading is not easy at all. I'll tell you that right now. Definitely um, not. Oh, 100%. So, so after you made... Your money, because you traded crypto, right? You made a ton of money off that. And mm -hmm. then you were like, all right, let's try something else. And so that's when you created your VC firm, right? Correct, yes. So I have a couple questions with because I'm actually very curious. I'm asking questions. I'm learning in the moment as you guys are seeing this. So first off, that's something that sounds like, you know, something I would very much want to do one day. Obviously, right now, all my money is in my own businesses, right? Mm -hmm. 
But one day, you know, if they are profitable or if I exit in some sort of way, someone acquires it, I would love to invest in, you know, other young entrepreneurs, whatever. So first of all, what made you want to put your money into a, a VC firm for yourself instead of something like stocks or, or real estate or, or watches or gold? Why did you pick starting a VC firm? And then how, how did you do that? I don't even I don't even know where to start. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. OK, so. Basically, I got to the point in crypto where it was taxes time, how to pay taxes, all this. And I was like, hey, this is a perfect time to diversify a little bit. And I didn't touch stocks because I feel like I have such an edge in crypto that why would I invest in stocks? Um, real estate is something that I do want to expand in, but I feel like the opportunity cost of my money is better in crypto or venture capitalist firm rather than sitting and making, you know, whatever percentage it is a year in real estate. Real estate's probably a little less risky, right? But yes. you make more money in VC. Correct. Okay. Um, that makes sense. So basically, I started my own venture capitalist firm. So you have to be an accredited investor to get that. You have to make an LLC. Um, and then basically, you have to put money into the bank account and start going through deal flow. So a VC venture capitalist firm is basically a, um, an investment firm that invests in startups before they IPO. IPO means listing on the stock exchange. So you're investing in like Uber, for example, when Uber just started and had this idea and now Uber, the, the people who invest in, IP, in Uber made like a, a thousand times their money. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it's about finding these new startups and you're helping them out by giving them money and, and in return get equity for their company. And in return, the future, you want the company to be valued at, you know, a multiple above. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So it's like investing in, you know, a stock way before it's available for everybody else. So you have an edge. But how, how many how many are you invested in right now? Yeah, so I have three deals, um, but a majority of my capital is in one deal. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't actually publicly announced that yet, um, but there's a lot of people who are also in that deal with me, um, like a few of the TikTokers who like they have connections through everybody else. Some 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 known TikTokers are in the same deal you are. Yeah, uh, me, you? me, Josh Richards, really? Uh, oh wow, Bryce Hall, yeah, a few people. But so. can and you can't talk about it, probably. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna announce it soon. I just I haven't announced it yet. You can probably with this information you can find out what it is. Okay. Um, I feel like with with social media, like, you know, I don't know if this is what you want, but you know, if you do continue to go into social media and you know build your own personal brand in addition to what we're doing here, that's probably gonna give you a lot of opportunity. You're gonna get a lot of people, and I know this because it happens to me all the time. You're going to get a lot of people are going to hit you up and, and either ask you for a job or they're going to be like, dude, I have this great business idea. Like, <laughs> you know, you should check this out, blah, blah, blah. And it's just going to be fucking horseshit. Like 99 times out of 100, out of 100 it's horseshit. But, you know, if you sift through enough of them, you'll probably find a good one. Um, but, that, you know, so first of all, how, how did you find that? Yes. How did you find that deal? So with venture capitalists investing – it, the good companies, it's not just the money, it's your value add to the company because they have millions of dollars from all these different banks, VC firms, everything. So they start asking you, the good deals, hey, what can you bring to this company besides just your money? And I went across some of my biggest deals by just simply cold emailing the founder, just cold emailing, trying to hop on a call with them. Luckily enough, I, I mean, I messaged like 15 different people. And like, but how'd you find these in general? In general. Yeah. So there's, there's websites where you could see, you know, new startups, oh, okay. open rounds, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and the round was actually almost closed. So I, I would email a founder, hop on a zoom call with them, kind of just like telling my story and who I am as a person. And you know, a lot of like the old money, these banks, they're the ones investing in this. And that's kind of the edge I have is I have a younger perspective on things. Um, I also, my venture capitalist firm focuses on like three different things, like the advancement of society, space exploration, and like biotechnology. Those are the three things that I personally focus on. And it's it, sure it's about the money, but it's also like, I want to live in a world that is like, is sick. You know what I'm saying? At the yeah, end of the day. So yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I would love to do something like that one day. That's awesome. When I'm rich. And you also don't... Not, not if. You what? don't have to have your own money for venture capitals firm. You could have liquidity providers who really? basically give you money and you choose where to invest it. Um, Wait so that a is, minute. That Wait is a the thing. Yeah, yeah. What is that? Yeah, so um, for example, you can create a venture capitalist firm and you can and you can have people and say, hey, if you want to be a liquidity provider, provider for my venture capitalist firm, you can invest $100,000 in this VC and I'm going to invest it and get, because I have these connections and can get into these deals. Interesting. And really? Yeah. So you don't have to use your own money. And then usually how that works is you would take like a 20% fee on all the profits basically. And then wow. they, they would obviously keep the rest. So. Majority, yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's dope. I mean, okay, that's interesting because 
I would say the thing that I'm good at, I'm not that school smart. I'm not that book smart. I'm not, I'm not the strongest guy in the room. I'm not the funniest guy in the room. I'm not the smartest guy in the room once again, <laughs> but I'm really good at talking to people. Right. And just, and totally. like making friends and networking. And so I, I've been approached by a lot of companies that I now have a little bit of equity in and they offered me pretty much affiliate deals, which is also what I do for my business. And what that is, is like, they'll say, okay, Lucas, you have a following, your following really likes you. We want you to sell our product and we'll give you a commission. And I'm, I'm smart. I'm, I'm like, fuck that. Absolutely not. I know my worth. Give me a piece of your company, but I'm not just going to make content for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to serve as essentially what I call it is the director of creative outreach. And it kind of sounds ridiculous and it kind of is, but it, but it works. What I do is then I use my platform because I, I'm not that big. I have like 175 K right now, but I'm, good friends with a lot of these big creators that have like millions of followers, right? For some reason they like me and, uh, and a lot of them are really good guys too. But then I use my connection and I pitch the same deal that the companies that have now given me equity, I pitch that same deal that they originally gave me to someone that has like a following, you know, two, three, four, five X what I have. Right. And so that's like my specialty is that I use, I leverage my network for the benefit of other people. And so, I actually really like that idea though. So you're saying I could go to someone that has a lot of money and has nowhere to put it and be like, okay, I have a following. I know a lot of people. I have access to a lot of not only um, potential deals, but potentially other people that could benefit for these deals. If you give me your money, I will invest it for you. Obviously I'm going to clear it all with you. Make sure you know, make sure we have your approval, but you know, I have access to these deals that you don't. And I get a small piece. Exactly. Yep. That's Dude, it. exactly what it I'm is. I'm going to do that now. That's great. Yeah. See, I learned something new today. And so did you guys. <laughs> That's Definitely. dope. Yeah. So Sweet. those are basically my two, uh, my two ventures I'm doing right now. Hell so. yeah. I would say I want to give a little piece of business advice because I get a lot of DMs. And once again, like I'm not even fucking claiming to be Mark Cuban or Alex Hermosi. I don't know if I said this already in the podcast, but the reason that I am making... TikTok videos, Instagram videos, YouTube podcasts, whatever. The reason that I'm documenting my whole process is I look at a guy like Mark Cuban, Gary V, Alex Ramosi is my favorite. I look at these big business guys who are not only extremely intelligent and smart and successful, but also they seem like cool, good people. They seem like genuine people. And I just wish that there was like, you know, a documentary about them, uh, you know, uh, a docu-series but something that doesn't just show where they are today, but like shows them from day one. Like imagine if someone took a, a video camera and followed Steve Jobs since he was a kid. That, that'd wow. be the biggest hit ever. It's insane. So I'm not claiming I'm going to be Steve Jobs, but I'd love to bet on myself. And uh, if, and I'll, I'll say it again, when I'm successful one day, I would love for there to be, you know, a whole kind of documented process of how I did that where I was as a broke college student, borrowing a fuck ton of money from a fuck ton of people to start all my shit, putting everything I have into these. And, you know, hopefully if I do make it, then people can see like what it's actually like to be an entrepreneur. But that brings me to my, my piece of advice is if you're looking to start a business or, you know, any, any sort of like out of the box, non nine to five type venture in life, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot harder than something like a nine to five because, in a nine to five, people are telling you what to do. They're giving you tasks, just like your teachers in school. That's what school is for. It's you know meant to train you for a job. It's the complete opposite. Everything is on you. You don't know what to do. There is no manual. That, that's the thing about like being an entrepreneur and starting your own businesses is there's resources online. You can look up how to be an entrepreneur. You, you can find resources, but it's up to you to find them. And every single business is different, even if it's in the same industry, even if you're selling the exact same product to somebody else, every single business is different. And so there is no playbook. You have to figure it out yourself. But that's also like, in my mind, in my opinion, why it's such a beautiful sport is because, you know, it's almost like war in a way and, and you have to figure it out as you go. And the only way you get better is through experience. And I'm going to, I'm going to plug my company a little bit right here. I own the brand Squid Hoss. 
the reason I call it squid hoss, the reason it was named squid hoss is squid and hoss are two completely different words. Squid means like pussy, weak, spineless, <laughs> loser, nerd. You know, it's an insult, right? That's what you get called if uh, if you're the kid getting bullied in high school, right? And I was the kid that was getting bullied when I was a little kid. Hoss is the exact opposite, right? It's like Hoss means, you know, you're a stud. You're good at everything, right? Everyone wants to be around you, right? And so, yeah, my brand's named after that, but it's kind of like a metaphor for life in that it's very easy to look at people who have achieved a lot of success, whether it is a businessman like Mark Cuban or an actor like Brad Pitt or an athlete like Tom Brady, it's easy to look at them and be like, damn, they've, they've always been like that. They've always been like a, a godly human who just has it figured out. That's not the case. You know, most of these guys that are really successful, you know, actually, you know, believe it or not, and a lot of people don't want to believe this, they came from nothing. They had to figure out the things along the way. They had to fail. They had to be willing to fail again and again and again. And that's why they're successful is because they took all those risks. And, uh, and they were able to put themselves out there and, and deal with failure and, you know, build off of that. And so a lot of people out there, I think, want to be entrepreneurs. They might not understand that fact. It's not easy. It's hard. But there's so much more to gain than something like a nine to five. And so that's why CJ and I are, are really doing this is we obviously we're, we enjoy making videos and we enjoy, you know, learning from each other and, and, and talking about our own stories, but like hopefully inspire some kid out there, you know, to go and start his first business and figure it out. And then maybe one day he comes and he does something like this too. I think that'd be dope as fuck. I would love for, you know, five, 10 years in the future, we're both successful and some kid DMs us or some kid approaches us on the street and he's like, yo, I love your guys' videos. I started a business because of you guys. And, you know, I just dropped out of college. That would make, that would, Nigga. that would be, yeah. that, that, that in my opinion is being rich. Like that is, that is, you know, pure happiness. If something like that happened to me, I don't know about you. That's that's better than getting a million dollar deal. Totally, just having something like that happen. Yeah, obviously a million dollars is nice too, though. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and to go back to your point of like, I mean, you, you can't really fake it to make it. Like you, you have to really want it and really put your mind to it and your time to it, and you have to sacrifice a lot of things in your life to really achieve your goals and dreams. Like Steve Dobbs just didn't like a little side project and make Apple. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was oh, a whole, 100%. a whole process he had to go through. And something I kind of want to talk about is, a, I mean, we're in college. I'm assuming a lot of our viewers are probably in college also. And there is a lot of distractions in college. Dude. I, so I was just about to ask you like, yeah, do you think because you know, you you're obviously very focused. You've done a lot. I know you also have a good time though. I was, I was about to ask you, how do you think your college life has maybe like, I don't want to say suffered, but like, how have you had that balance? So I'm glad you're talking about this already. Yeah, totally. So let's bring it back all the way to freshman year. And me and Lucas were living in the dorms. We were actually neighbors. And halfway through the year, bam, COVID happens. And everybody is sent home for spring break. We all think of returning. Nope. Um, basically a whole year, we're all online. And I got really mad. I got, it kind of took it really personal because, and it ended up being the best time of my life. COVID was the best thing that's ever happened to me because it made me sit down and go on my computer. And a lot of people, when COVID was happening, they got mad. They just wasted their time playing video games, all this. I was like, hey, college is supposed to be the best four years of my life. And now two years of it is taken away because of COVID. I'm not going to let that slide. So I'm going to work on myself and turn this negative into a positive. So that whole year and a half that COVID was happening, I sat down, was on my computer every single day, working on myself, learning crypto. And that year and a half basically turned me into crypto, just doing a, like a side type part-time thing to it taking over my whole entire life and it being my main passion, my main focus. So really take things personal. Even if they're like, you know, like there was nothing I can do. Nobody could control COVID. Nobody could control how the government was reacting to it. None of that. No one get into politics, any of that. But at the end of the day, it took away a year and a half of my life. How was I going to react to that? Was I just going to sit at home in my bed, complain, be like, oh, I can't party. I can't do this, that. No, you know? So oh, I yeah. changed my life, turned it around. And yeah. Dude, so, I think that's a great way to look at it. There was, um, I don't know if I told you that this yet, but so, so I, I do uh, what I call like these calls. Right. And, uh, and, People are going to be like, what the fuck? Who would pay to talk to you? You don't have to, whatever. But, <laughs> you know, I'm very busy. And so if someone does want to talk to me, like, you know, I'll charge them a little bit of money for it. It's my time, right? You don't have to do it. Don't get mad about it. But um, this guy I talked to hit me up and he's like, yo, there's this 15-year-old that I know. He's like a family friend. He really wants to talk to you. I'll pay for him to talk to you for an hour. And uh, it was one of the best phone calls I've actually ever had. I'm on the phone with this 15-year-old. It was actually like mind blowing how calm and confident he was the entire time. Like 
you know, a lot of people like when they're talking to someone that they want to talk to, they're nervous. They don't know what to say. This kid was so calm and collected. And he pretty much told me, he was like, Hey, what's up, man? I, I love your stuff. I love your content. It's super motivating. I learned a lot. He goes, I'm 15 years old. Um, I have, I have this, I had this accident where like blood, it doesn't go to like my feet and my hands. And so I guess like, I hope I'm getting that right, but he has some sort of like accident or disease that like, it's a disability and he's been out of his school, out of high school for two years now, right? And so he's just been at home by himself. And uh, and he started telling me like what he was doing during that time. Unbelievable. He was talking about how, first of all, he, he's, he trades too. Not crypto, he trades stocks um, and options. But he was telling me how all he's been doing since he's been home is learning how to trade, reading, listening to podcasts. And when he's able to, like trying to do some sort of, you know, uh, physical therapy, like he'll have his mom uh, drive a car right next to him in case he passes out while he's running. But he'll like try and go on runs and uh, and he'll run and like until he like, you know, is about to pass out. And then his mom will like park the car hella fast and get out and help him. And it was fucking amazing because 99.9% of people, if they were in a situation like that, would bitch and would complain and, and would act as a victim. And I'll say one thing, even though like you have every right to be a victim in a situation like that, like that's horrible. You're 15 years old. All you want to do is be a kid, hang out with your friends, um, have fun, you know, while you don't have responsibilities yet in life. And like something bad like this happens to you where you, you have this disability or, or you get in an accident. It's out of your control. It's not your fault. It's not fair. It's definitely not fair. You have every reason every right to be a victim in that situation. And this 15 year old was like, no, like I'm going to get better one day. And when I do get better, like I want to be the exact and perfect best version of myself by the time that happens. And, uh, and it was honestly inspiring. Cause I, you know, I was like, I don't know if I would have acted that way when I was 15, I'd like, mm. I would act that way now cause I've had a mindset change. But, um, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I, th I think so many people, have like little minor inconveniences in life and, and they let it turn them into a victim. And, and once again, they bitch and complain and they make excuses and they get angry at the world and they get mad at other people and, and put the blame on them. And I think you need to think about it differently. This, this might sound privileged. This might sound arrogant a little bit, but your life would be much cooler if you had a lot of struggle and you made it out. If you were in a pit and you crawled out of that and you, when you're in the pit, once again, like if, if it's not your fault and you're stuck in there, like it's not your fault. But if you can crawl out, that is going to give you so much confidence and that's going to make you such more of a fulfilled and happy person in life. And I remember I was in a deep pit when I was a kid. A lot of people probably look at me and they go, oh, that, you know, that guy has it figured out and he has all these friends and, and his life is good and he's spoiled and he's you know, I just, I, th I know for a fact, a lot of people look at me and they're like, fuck that guy, right? <laughs> what has he had to go through? And, you know, I don't want to be like sob story me, but the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think there's a lot of people in similar situations. When I was a kid, I had no friends. I was bullied by everybody. I was suicidal for a year. I had to go to like school counseling, which was fucking embarrassing. Like I look back on this, it's cringe as fuck. And I was just not happy with myself. And I remember I looked in the mirror one day and I was like, I, I was like thinking, I, I want to die. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. And I got really close to the point of ending it all. And then I looked in the mirror and I was like, you know what? Like, do I not be, do I not want to be here? Or do I just not want to be in the place that I currently am? And so I looked in the mirror and I was like, do I need to really kill myself or do I need to kill the guy that I'm looking at right there? Do I need to become somebody better? Do I need to become somebody that I'm proud of, that is happy in their skin, that is confident? And that was like, I'm so grateful that I had that realization because that's like what gave me the current mindset I have. And I think a lot of people need to realize that. Like if you're in a shit, shitty situation, you can change it. But the first step is honestly like... I don't want to say manning up because it could happen to a girl too, but like man up, like man up, say I deserve more. Say, am I going to be the bitch that's like sitting here and complaining 
and making everybody else feel bad for me? Or am I going to be the guy that turns into the person that I've always wanted to be that becomes my own hero? There, there's this famous speech where Matthew McConaughey says he is his own hero. And, uh, and obviously Matthew McConaughey is a fucking stud and he has the right to say that. But if you hear somebody like me say that, you'll be like, oh, fuck this guy. But I think everybody should think in that way. You should become the person. You should make a commitment to yourself. In five years, I'm going to become the person that if my current self could look at that person, I would say, that's my hero. That's who I want to be, right? So I don't know. I guess that, bring, that, I guess that brings me to the question like, if you were to look back on your life five years before right now, are you surprised by where you are right now? Did you know that you were going to be, you know, essentially a millionaire at 22 or are you kind of surprised? Um, I mean, I've always, I've always had goals for myself and I've set them. Uh, I would say I have hit most of my goals luckily. Uh, but it, it's, it's not about, hitting the goals because the goals keep growing, you know? Um, like there's always going to be someone who has more money than you. There's always going to be someone who's more attractive than you. Always going to be someone who, you know, this, that, who has a hotter wife than you, like all this stuff, you know? Uh, so like comparison is a thief of joy in my opinion. And you can't judge your goals and dreams off of other people at all. You have to control your own reality and life is unfair. Some people are going to be born into money. Some people are going to be born into better circumstances, but like you can't, there, there's no point in dwelling over that because you can't change that at all. There's nothing you can do. All you can do is accept it and move on with your life and choose what you want to do because I'm not dissing anyone who's okay with being comfortable and okay with like settling for whatever it is, but you have one life to live and why would you not want to set these outrageous goals? You know, like it's, it's shoot for the 100%. moon, shoot for the moon. And you know, if you miss, you'll hit the stars. Like you need to put yourself out there and like, just go as hard as you can. Like you have one life. Why are you not trying as hard as you can and do what you want in this life? You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, like you, I mean, go out, party, have fun, but like earn that right to party, earn that right to have fun, you know? And it's just, I think more people need to realize that like there's a lot of distractions in life. There's a lot of things going on. But at the end of the day, it's your life and you get to choose what you want to do with it. So whatever your goals may be, it doesn't even have to be monetarily. It could be creative. It could be in terms of friendships. It could be in terms of love, um, whatever you want. But just put yourself out there and, and set some goal. Don't just be waking up every day being sad, lazy, don't know what's going on. Like have every single day you should wake up and be excited to do something, you know? 100%. I think... A lot of people in my comments on TikTok, they're like, why do you always dog on nine to five workers, like have some respect or whatever? I have the utmost respect for someone that works like a restaurant job. I worked in three restaurants when I was all through high school. I had a job every single summer and I had one throughout the year when I wasn't in football. And and I did that shit and it sucks. Okay, it sucks being a fucking waiter and working your ass off for tips and people treat you like dirt. It blows like and so. If that's what you want to do and you're happy, great. But like if you want to do something else, we live in a time and if you're in the United States, we live in a place where you really do get to pick whatever you want. And there's, you know, once again, going to be people that are like, oh, that's not true. It is. OK, like figure it out. Right. It is. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, it's going to take sacrifice. Like, you know, I'll be honest. I'm in the place right now. Um, you know, I have two businesses that are actively running right now and then I'm working on a third. I'm at the place where I've put everything I have into these businesses and I was just thinking about it the other day, how much money I'm going to have to make post graduation, which is in a, in a month to like fully go after this entrepreneurship thing and not get a job. And, and I have some pretty good job offers right now. Um, like just from people hitting me up through social media and being like, you know, do you want to work with me? Do you want to work for me? Whatever. And, uh, and even though they're great offers, I can't, I, I'm not okay with like building somebody else's, um, dream. I want to build my own. And so I was just thinking about it. I was like, damn, you know, it could come to the point where I have to choose between my rent for my house or my rent for my warehouse for my company. And like, am I okay with sleeping on the floor of a warehouse? Fuck. Yeah. That sounds dope. Actually. That, that'd be a that, cool dope, story. Man. You know what I mean? Like I, I was just thinking about that in my mind. I was like, that'd be a really cool story if I had to sleep on the warehouse for a couple of months, you know, until it got up and running. But you know, sometimes that's the sacrifice you have to make. And, um, and it, it, you know, it might not be worth it. You might make that sacrifice for that dream you have, whether it's being an entrepreneur or being a professional athlete or being an actor or an actress, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to make sacrifices to get something that's worthwhile. 
And you have to be okay with the idea of, you know what, there is no guarantee that it is going to work, but at least I get to die knowing I tried. You know what I mean? I, I feel like laying in your deathbed and thinking, I wish, I wish I had tried that. You know, I, I, I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to go mountain climbing and, and I never got to in my lifetime or I've always wanted to start that business and I never got to, or you know what, like I didn't get to tell that person that I really did like that, that I was obsessed with that. Yeah. Having any sort of regret like that while you're dying is terrifying to me. You know what I mean? And so yeah, it's much better to have regret for doing something than regret for not doing something. You know what I mean? No, totally. 100%. Yeah. I mean, you're never going to regret taking a chance because even if it fails, what happens if you didn't take that chance? You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it, I mean, when, when you're young, you really have nothing to lose. It gets harder as you're older and, and you, you know, you, you have someone that depends on you. Maybe it's your parents or they're getting old and you need to take care of them. Or maybe you have a family member that gets sick or something, or maybe, maybe you have kids like, you know, and in some ways, like once you have kids, like in my mind, like that's your main priority. And so it is really hard to do something like start a business or change your career path when you're an adult and you have kids. It's not impossible. It's a lot harder. So if you are a kid, you know, now, now is the best time to do it. And I don't, I want to ask you a question about this, but one thing that I've noticed being, being young and, and being someone that's like ambitious and, and, and wants to be an entrepreneur and stuff, or is a, is a young entrepreneur, not successful, that not that successful yet is, a lot of people, a lot of older people, they want to help you. Have have you experienced that? Like, I mean, like even like with my mentor or like people who have given me advice and stuff, I've ran into a lot of really, really successful people. And part of this is just, you know, me being somewhat privileged and growing up in a, in a really nice area around a lot of money. Like a lot of my, uh, a lot of my friends' parents were loaded and I would always talk to them. Like everyone else was playing BP outside. I was talking to their parents, but I've, I've found that if you just show a little bit of ambition and, and, and desire to learn and be open-minded, a lot of adults that are successful are like not only willing, but like want to help you. They, they love that, you know, you're young and you're getting after and they want to help you. Have you experienced anything like that in your life or no? Yeah, totally. Um, for me in terms of like crypto and stuff, I've gotten like help from a lot of bigger crypto traders in terms of just connections and teaching me a lot of things. And I feel like it's the people who are like happy and successful in life who are so eager to help other people. They're not like secretive. They're not like looking down on you or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I've gotten like really good vibes from a lot of really good people. Um, really no, no hate or anything at all. Oh yeah. yeah. So one thing I've noticed is first of all, you hear that common expression. That's like, what is it? What is it? It's a, uh, Oh, you'll always get to know if you don't ask, right? And yes. So, so correct. the idea is yeah. like, just ask for something. But what I've noticed recently, and and I don't know, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of these now that you're putting yourself out there and you're talking about what you've done and stuff. But I get a lot of outrageous asks from people, like someone will. Yeah, we'll do some crazy ones. Yeah. Yeah, like I'll I'll give some examples, but like if you're gonna ask for a favor, I, I want to talk about this because I want to explain the right way to do it you need to do it the right way if you want to get something out of it. Whenever I ask anybody for a favor, big or small, I always start it with the same thing. I say, hey man, um, I got to ask you a really big favor. And they go, oh, what's up, right? And they, they kind of expect, they expect a lot when you say, I got to ask you a really big favor. And I go, my car broke down. It's at the Lexus dealership right now. Can you drive me to pick it up? It's like a 10 minute drive. And they're like, oh, yeah, of course. Why not? You know, but I framed it in a way that was, it was a big deal. And then when I ask for a big favor, I throw in some sort of incentive because yeah, like you should do nice things for your friends, but you should always, if you're asking for something, you should offer something in return. It doesn't need to be totally. money, but I just think you should always ask because once again, like it's really hard to do everything in life alone. It's, you know, and like learn from other people and shit, but you got to understand how to word stuff the right way to get what you want. And so like, you know, an example of doing it the right way. Um, I'm trying to think of like a, an example, like what's I have an example. If you oh want yeah. One. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was cold emailing these different startup companies, oh, and I yeah, was trying, this, trying this to invest in them, I emailed like 15 of them and only two of them responded. 
Um, and the reason why is, well, first off, there was just, they had a lot of other offers from these big banks, all this, but it's the way that I worded myself and I approached them. I didn't just say, Hey, I have this amount of money. I want to invest in your company. You know, that separates me at, not at all. Instead, I told them, Hey, I'm a sophomore in college. Now I've been really interested in crypto because of this. I'm interested in your company because of this and what it's going to do for society. Um, I really want to help you out and make your vision a reality. I'm young and I can have a new perspective on this. And that's why I think you should like take my, take my call right now. You know, absolutely. And instead of just asking someone like, Hey, I want to invest your company. No one's going to respond to you. You have to it's like show them who you are and show them why. Oh, yeah. You know? So I think that's a relatively good example. I, yeah, I, I just thought of another one right now. Um, so I started my brand, Squid Hoss, because I was inspired by, I don't know, if you, do you know the brand Kill Crew? Yeah, Culty Bra. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you showed me. I did, yeah. So the, the one of the founders of Kill Crew, he has like this small private Instagram account. Thousand and, followers. Or yeah, and, and CJ showed me his Instagram. So I've been following him a while now because I'm just very fascinated by it. Um, and I, I never told you this, but... You know, I'm a big proponent of like, if somebody else has information that I could potentially, you know, benefit from, like I will pay him whatever it takes to learn it. So I DM'd Colton just today. I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up right now. Cause I think this is a good way of just for some background for the viewers, uh, Owner at Kill Crew, he turned this business from zero dollars into a nine-figure business workout short company. Um, he documented the whole entire thing on Twitter from start to finish. Complete Chad. Yeah, this guy. This guy's yeah, sick. Yeah, he's a stud. Yeah, That'd stud. be sick. We should have him on one day. We should. That Hopefully would be one we're bigger and we have something to offer. But this is what totally. I said. I, um, I I sent him a couple of different messages and then deleted it. And finally, I came yeah. across this one. But uh, I said... I said, brother, my cousin and I started our fitness brand after being inspired by what you, have, you and your boys have done with Kill Crew... I said, let me get straight to the point. We'd love to pay you to pick your brain for a little bit. Whatever you got time for, even if it's 15, 20, 30, or 60 minutes, name your price. We'll pay for whatever, right? Imagine if I just DM the guy. I said, yo, can I talk? I get DMs like this all the time. It'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm having this problem with this girl, bro. And I was wondering if, if we could hop on the phone and talk about it or or someone will be like, yo, I'm, I'm starting this business. Can you hop on the phone and talk about it? And like, like maybe when I was smaller, I had the time, but when you're getting like 15, 20 of these a day, like I, I just can't be doing that shit anymore. Mm -hmm. What I did for this guy and he might, you know, he might never see it, but it was worth a shot. I was like, listen, bro, I know your time is valuable. I know you're a very busy guy. I know you're very established. You're very successful at this point. So I know your time is valuable. I will do anything to get just a little bit of information out of you. I will pay you whatever you want. Like if he responded to me and he said, yeah, I got an hour tomorrow morning, 2000 bucks. I'd call up my partner right now in my business. His name's Troy. He's my, uh, he's my cousin. And uh, I'd be like, Troy, let, I don't know if we have the money in the account right now, but uh, get it. Like we need, to talk, <laughs> we need to talk to this guy. Like we'll make it happen now. You know what I mean? So if you're going to ask, that's what I forgot to bring up earlier is I get DMs like this all the time. People just asking for stuff. And like, I want to be generous. I want to be helpful. But like when there's so many people doing it, it's hard. And so if you want to ask someone for something and you want to potentially have a response or get what you want, you have to think in a, in a mindset of the other person. Like, why would this person want to talk to me? Mm -hmm. Am I that interesting? What could I offer them? You know what yeah. I mean? And I mean, there's a good chance that obviously he doesn't respond. But a good I don't think he will respond, but respond I could not hit him up and try. Totally. I had to try. And he might also respond and be like, hey, man, like he doesn't, he doesn't need $2,000. You know what I'm saying? He might but, respect but it and he be like, you know what? Exactly. He might respect the fact that you offered it, you know? So. You know, should I DM him? Right? Should I be like, thousand, <laughs> thousand bucks? I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> thousand, bu um, thousand bucks for an hour of your time. But speaking of this guy, he's actually one of like the best mentality people I've, I've seen on Twitter. I recommend giving him a follow on that and Instagram. Um, his mindset is just something different. And that's kind of why he was able to make his brand. And that's one of the biggest things I've like I've noticed about people is there's like this deeper level of understanding of life and Just goals and dreams. And uh yeah, so find those misfits, find those people. Oh yeah. And yeah. We've talked uh we've talked a lot about business and, and life advice up until this point. How long has it been? I think it's been about an hour. Some uh, stories. Yeah, let's get into Let's get in. Let's get into some good stories right now, just to finish it off. I've never really talked to you about this. What was it like living with your mentor in LA? That's a good question. Um, it was. It was definitely the most beneficial experience of my life by far. Um, my mentor, uh, pretty much a good friend of my dad's. He, uh, vi like you know, I kind of mentioned it earlier. Very, very successful dude, but he's also extremely hardcore. Um, 
Like if he, if he found out, I've gotten three tattoos since I lived with him. And if he found out I had these and I'll probably see him again soon, he's, he's going to be upset because um, he's a little old fashioned. But it was intense. Like it, it really, sh- but at the same time it was beneficial in that it showed me what it was like to be at his level. Like I got to imagine living with someone worth, you know, probably like total net worth, total assets over a half a billion dollars. Imagine living with someone like that, seeing how they live their life, seeing, you know, what they choose to spend time on, what they choose to think about, how they choose to react to certain situations. Um, he never did. He never did dishes. That was the funniest part. Like he would make food, <laughs> leave the kitchen a mess um, because it, it wasn't worth his time. He, we, there was a maid, too, that came like, you know, I think twice a week. But that wasn't worth his time. He wouldn't have done the dishes if they were just going to stack there for weeks. He, he had like so much going on and he was thinking about so many different things. He had so many different priorities that like doing the dishes was a waste of time in terms of like how much money does doing the dishes make me? None. So mm-hmm. he wouldn't do it. Right. And I remember he would make me, he didn't make me, but he woke up at like four thirty five every morning. Um, and so I wanted to impress the guys. My mentor is my boss. And so I would do the same. And I remember one morning I slept until like five fifteen, five thirty, And the reason for that was I was up until two in the morning the night before working. I was like, you know, finishing up some projects for the job I was doing for him. Um, I was answering some emails and then I was also trying to build my business at the time. And I woke up at like five fifteen, come downstairs to make my coffee. And he's just sitting there on the couch staring at me. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, Oh, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes five fifteen, huh? And I was like, yeah, you know, I was up, I made an excuse. I was like, yeah, I was up really late last night. I was doing some work for uh, the name of his employee who I worked for. He goes, only losers wake up at 5.15. And I just kind of like smiled, but he was being dead serious. And he just stood up and walked away. He was an intense guy, but I love that dude. I love yeah. it. it. It's, um, I think most people are so... I think most people, if they were around him, would be like, you know what, this this guy's kind of a dick because he's he's intense. But the reason he's intense is because he wants to help you. And I, you know, in a way, I think a lot of people think that of me too. I'm very hard on my friends. Oh, that, so that's a good question. Like tough love, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a very tough love person. Um, you know, I remember I had a family member who was a little bit overweight, and and it was causing them some health issues. And the doctor said, you know, you need to lose weight. And the person was like, oh, well, you know, what kind of medicine can I take to fix this? And the doctor was like, no, you need to lose weight. Like, that's the only solution. You need to exercise, you need to diet. And they didn't do it. They like completely ignored the doctor's advice. And I tried at first to encourage them to work out. I said, hey, I'm going at this time every day. You could come with me, right? We'll leave at the same time, we'll go there. Because we were, we were part of the same gym membership. We had like a family membership. And they just wouldn't do it. They'd be like, nah, not today, maybe next week. And it got to the point where I was like, you're being selfish. I literally yelled at them. I was like, you're being selfish as fuck. And they were completely shook. There was mm-hmm. multiple people in the kitchen when I did this. They are like, what? I was like, you're being selfish. Why? I said, you not taking care of your health is taking away years that my kids get to spend with you, that I get to spend with you. And that potentially you might not even get to see my kids' kids because you're going to die soon because you're not taking care of your, your, your health, and that's selfish. And uh, even though that is tough love, and I tell that story a lot, and people say, you know what, that's kind of cruel, that's insensitive, that's, <coughs> that's fucked up, let them live their life. It got them to do it. And, uh, and I do that shit with people I care about because I think it's the right thing to do when you care about someone, you want to see them do well, but... Um, I think a lot of people, they're non-confrontational and they, they're not comfortable with making people close to them uncomfortable. So they kind of like let their friends and family and people they care about uh, do harm to themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I think that if you truly, if someone is truly your friend, I mean, you, you have to stand up for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You have to stand up for what you value, what you believe in, like if you truly are boys with someone and they're doing something wrong or you see them doing something in their life that you don't think is the best for them, like you should tell them. You should be 100% honest with them. You know, And you shouldn't have people in your life that are like trampling all over you, all this. Like, Stand up for yourself. Like, you know, it, um, Absolutely. 
it only, if anything, it's only going to build your relationship stronger. I think you don't confront people you're not close with, you know? So if there's someone in your life who, you know, as the example you said, like, tell them to get their head on straight, you know? It's it's so hard because I had, like, an encounter with um, some of my good, good friends recently. Like, they'll, they'll probably see this clip and they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But I walked into their house and I was like, dude, what are you guys doing? Like, it's fucking, like... I think I was like, it's four in the afternoon. Like you guys are sitting here playing video games. Like let's do something productive. And I got a little angry at them. And one of my boys brought me outside and he was like, yo, like you got to chill with that stuff. And (laughs) I was like, what do you mean? Like, I'm I'm trying to help you guys. Like I want to see you guys like do well. And he's like, Pactor, you're pissing people off. And I was like, dude, what do you mean? Like, I don't care. Like I want to help you guys. He goes, bro, at a certain point, and he said this to me, and it's true. He goes, you can lead the horse to water. You can't force him to drink. He goes, true. they know, like, you're motivated. They know you're working on stuff. And uh, and if they need help, they'll ask you. But if you're always being hardcore, always, you know, in their face, like, you guys need to do this and this, they're just going to slowly start to resent you. And uh, and he was right. He was absolutely right. It was a hard pill for me to swallow because, you know, at that point, I used to hate admitting that I was wrong. <coughs> but... um. Yeah, I think at a certain point, like, if you care about someone and you want to see them to do well, offer them help maybe once, maybe twice, maybe three times. If they still don't do it, at some point, like, they're just going to drag you down too. And so you got to just set them free and say, you know what, I'm here if you need me. But, uh, you know, I've offered and I've done all I can. And so you're on your own. That's really the best way to look at it, in my opinion. Because if you really try and, like, if you're, if you're going somewhere high, like, it, this is the way I look at it rockets right they have different levels of propulsion on them that are attached when they get to certain levels of altitude certain pieces of the rocket fall off because they're not equipped to handle that altitude and if they don't fall off (coughs) it's just extra weight sorry i'm a little sick (laughs) it's just extra weight holding them back and so you can try and bring someone with you but if they're holding you back you know you have to let them go honestly i guess uh wrapping up the podcast right now lucas any final words to say yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, this is the first one we're going to be uploading. So, sure. you know, it's a fun experience, honestly, to like record yourself. And it's actually really cool, like listening to yourself talk and all this shit. It, it, it's fun for us. Um, so we hope you guys got something out of it as well. This whole podcast was completely on the spot. Yeah. Nothing planned. Uh, but I think in the next one, we'd like to incorporate some other topics and that, you know, some of the viewers are more interested in. So, whether it's like on my channel, on my account, in my comments, or in the comments of this podcast on YouTube, if you guys have any questions whatsoever that you think we should talk about or any you know certain topics, it could be about something business related, something money related, like a you know crypto question for CJ. It could be um, it could be a question about college. It doesn't even really matter. Anything you think we might be able to answer, throw it out there. We'll check them all out. We'll pick the best ones. Um, obviously we won't talk about stuff we don't think we're qualified to talk about, but, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I know CJ enjoyed it. Really fun time. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. All right. Cheers. Finish off first podcast. And, uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Let's get it.